So this is the right speaker from the Razer Noma Chroma 2.0 speaker system. Uh, this side contains the amplifier board and light controlling module, etc., etc., for this unit. Uh, so these are the capacitors that I ended up changing. Some of the soldering out of the factory is very, very shoddy. I just zoom in here. It's not so bad there in that line, but some of the caps were really poorly soldered. I started off with removing the one cap, C103. So this is the first cap I took off the board. And you can see it tests over 40 ohms, and it's got no capacitance. So that's obviously bad, but that was the worst one that I tested. Now, when it was on the board, it actually showed that it had capacitance and an ESR, but of course, that was reading it off other caps in the circuit. So if you want a good, accurate reading, you're probably best to either take off the cap right off the board, or at least desolder one of the legs and take a reading that way. So another cap off the board, still testing pretty high. So I'm actually pretty happy I decided to recap this whole thing. You can see the ESR there is not good. Still has capacitance though, so it's not as bad as the first one was, but it's still pretty bad. So putting the unit together again is exactly the reverse order of taking it apart. Uh, it's not too hard. You do need a very long, long screwdriver to get to the screws though. So here I am just plugging in some of the connectors back onto the board. Now there were only three that you could disconnect. The one that I disconnected and then there's two ribbon cables stacked right on top of each other that you have to plug in again. Now the first thing you have to do is you have to just slide the housing here that connects to the rest of the speaker. You got to slide that through the circuit board. Once you have it all the way pushed in, there are several screws to screw back in. That just secures it to the housing. So once the board's back on the housing with the screws, you can slip the housing through the back end of the speaker. And then you just have to watch for those ribbon cables. Just make sure they don't get tangled up on the exhaust port or hole on the back end of the speaker there. You might have to figure out a way to get your fingers in there so you can kind of manipulate the, the cables back into the connectors. It took me a couple minutes, but I finally got it. And there's the last connector in, so you just want to secure it. Replace the back cover and make sure it fits properly. Mine, I had to kind of wiggle it with my palm. There we go. I just kind of wiggled it just a little bit just to make sure it was secure. And then you can go ahead and put the four screws back in. Now, the screwdriver that you see here, it is fairly long, and you'll see how much of it's left. So you definitely need a long screwdriver to get these screws out. So once the four screws are back in place, that's pretty much it. The unit's back together again and you're ready to go back over to your desk and hook it back up just like I did. Since I replaced the capacitors, the unit's been working great. Uh, no static, it hasn't cut out again. It's working like a brand new set of speakers. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. If you liked the video, drop a like and remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching.